They go too fast. Okay. They go too fast and too hard. Um, they are impatient. They want to learn everything like that. And they compare themselves too much to people that have been doing it for six years. Yo Gorillas, welcome to the next episode of the Athlete Insider Podcast by Gore Nation. My name is Phil and today we have a special episode. We have the first female athlete in the podcast and I'm really, really happy to, yeah, to have you here, Iris. Uh, let me short, you. shortly introduce you. Um, you are one of the most passionate persons that I know um, in this sport. <laughs> you're, uh, you're like, it really feels that you're taking your whole life and putting it on the sports calisthenics and uh, like uh, you, you, you we just received your your study your bachelor thesis uh, and uh, you did it you wrote it over calisthenics you're an extremely strong competitive athlete and you're one of the heads of the Thank you so much. successful uh, event series world of bar heroes so yeah i'm really really happy to have you here iris weisenberg <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> Perfect. So let's start the episode. Um, you're on a birthday party and somebody approaches you and you don't know this person. How do you present yourself? What do you do? Like, who are you, Iris? So, um, yeah, I'm Iris. I'm 22 years old and I currently live in Vienna. I study international business administration with a focus on digital marketing and uh, innovation management. So I come from a kind of yeah, economic side, so to say. Um, and yeah, I've been doing my whole life sports. I studied, like in the past, I did a lot of gymnastics um, for, I think, like 13 years or something like that. It was quite long, but never on a professional level. But yeah, sport was always important for me. So I, I, I skied in the past. I um, did gymnastics, dancing. What else was there? Climbing. There was a bunch of things that I did. And I kind of ended up doing calisthenics. And the sport is right now actually like the center of my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to say, I, I train a lot, actually, mostly statics. Um, I don't know if the people that listen to the podcast know the difference between. They know. Okay, they do. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I train mostly statics, but also dynamics. And actually, when I started, I focused a lot on dynamics um because it was very close to gymnastics but yeah i found my passion more in static check actually because it's like that detailed work and <laughs> i really like to do that and yeah so i don't know what i would say at a party probably because this is normally involved in some kind of i love to dance so i get to know people through dancing and normally they like at some point i get asked about my shoulders or why my back is big. <laughs> and then I'm like, well, I do calisthenics. And they're like, what? What's that? <laughs> and then I'm like, well, it's kind of like freestyle gymnastics, a modern way, way of doing gymnastics. I think that's the easiest way to describe it, actually. And then they get really interested. So then I can spend like one hour talking about that because it's my passion. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, everybody who talks to you feels it directly that it's really your passion. I guess that you, so. That you put a lot of energy in it. And um, yeah, like what, what does your day look like with, with this passion? What does a typical day in the life of Iris look like? Oh, so it actually changed a lot recently through the whole quarantine stuff. Um, but it did me well. So right now it's actually like that. I wake up at like 8.30-ish, something like that. Um, I'm not really a morning person. <laughs> I'm more I'm more a night all, so to say. But um, yeah, so normally I w wake up at 8.30. Then I start studying, like the not so fun part normally of my day, <laughs> at 9-ish. And normally I have breakfast at the same time. And afterwards, well, I study for like, I don't know, it depends a little bit on the day. But normally, let's say until 3 or 4, something like that in the afternoon. Um, then I normally go for a training sesh, which lasts for like, let's say three hours, more or less, plus and minus. <laughs> <laughs> it depends how, how much I train. Like it's not a, like if I do only statics, it's more like two and a half hours. If I do dynamics as well, it's like three hours or a bit more. And if I play around, it takes forever, <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. And then when I get home, I actually, I started a YouTube channel. So right now I spend 
a lot of time on creating content and editing and I actually always loved all that kind of graphic design and also like producing messages and um, just putting my thoughts into videos. So I finally made, took the step and started with this. And this is normally my program from like, I don't know, eight in the evening on kind of or nine. And then I sit until midnight. And then normally the last one to two hours of the day I spend with my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, the passions have to go first. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. He understands that he's a professional dancer. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. It works pretty well in that case. Otherwise it wouldn't work, I guess. Because no. <laughs> if the other person doesn't understand why somebody's so obsessed of, of a thing. Yeah. Um, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't imagine being with somebody who's not into sports that much as I am and like right now he doesn't train that much because with dancing he's doing Latin dance so mm -hmm. um like with the distance rules it's a bit hard yeah. but normally he has training until 10 in the evening so this fits perfectly with my schedule okay <laughs> nice yeah so um yeah like I just when I when I prepared the interview I, I remembered like uh, the last time we saw each other was in Sweden I guess um, yes. when when you did when you competed at the Beast of the Bars uh, competition in Stockholm it was and uh, you did extremely well um, <laughs> and like well it, it was an insane competition overall but I think uh, like like your performance was was really it was it was awesome like it was awesome to Thank see you, so you uh, performing again because. Um, as a head of World of Bar Heroes, you're not uh, like competing there anymore. You're more in the organizational part, etc. And you're um, like, it was nice to, to see you compete again. But when I saw this uh, extremely strong athlete, and you're you're, you're doing like neck neck holds, uh, like <laughs> chin holds, and pl straddle planche, and like front lever and stuff like that, like crazy crazy stuff. Um, how did you get this person? What was what is your story to to get there? Where where can we start? Oh, <laughs> that's a hard <laughs> question, actually. Well, I already um, teased before that I um, started with dynamics first, um, but actually, I remember when I I had a um, when I started calisthenics, I had an injury on my left foot. I actually had um, three ligaments torn apart and an edema which is like a liquid in the, in the bone. Mm -hmm. So they told me that I'm not allowed to freestyle anymore. And then I remember I was going to the park. It's called the Estahazi Park in Vienna. Mm -hmm. And it's like a hotspot for calisthenics. And I went there with um, Dennis Piccolo, who is now my coach, mm -hmm. and Achim Gölles, who was back then the um, national champion of Austria in calisthenics. And um, both of them are like really into aesthetics. And... I remember I have seen planches before, like in gymnastics, but that was always like, I don't know, I won't be able to do that anyways, because I'm a girl and girls gymnastics doesn't feature planches. So I never really thought about it. And then I remember Achim doing it. And it was the first time I actually saw it in real life and not only on TV. And I was like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him how he how he learned that and he was like well it just takes a while you know a few years and so on I was like okay you know what I'm gonna be one of the first girls to do that as well and I kind of got really hooked up with the whole thing and that was actually the moment that I got really crazy about planches <laughs> and um, yeah it opened a world to the statics to me and I remember I then I, I thought about like learning front lever and that kind of stuff, but I was never really good in pull before. I was I got good in pull actually because my wrist was injured and I was not allowed to do handstands. You see, it's all based on injuries in my case. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but they all had their reason. It all did me well, so to say. <laughs> and yeah, I, I learned back lever and flag pretty quickly then. That was actually, I remember, it was my first tryout at Team Alphaba, which is my calisthenics club. And um, it was the tryout and my first time really trying out calisthenic skills. And Flo, wow. who is the head of the team, he showed me the, the basics for it. And I was like, damn, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Back then, there were not many girls actually in Team Alphaba. They all 
there were some, but they didn't really train seriously. Mm -hmm. And I remember afterwards, there came more and more and more. So I think I kind of kicked something off. This makes me pretty happy, actually. Um, yeah, I guess I was one of the first ones to do that kind of stuff as a girl in the Austrian calisthenics scene. So I'm kind of proud about that. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, because it's, it's true, like many moves, when you see a move, um, I, th I can imagine that as a girl, you, like when there is no girl that does the move, uh, like no inspiration, no, nobody who shows you it's possible, then a lot of people tend to just say, ah, it's not for me, it's not for yeah. girls. Like, and when you destroy this barrier for other girls, yeah. Exactly. I have a weird way of thinking. I don't know, like every time somebody tells me that a person like me hasn't done this before <laughs> yeah. or that this is not possible, I generally have to try it. It's like, I yeah. feel that inner force of doing it. <laughs> um, and it's, I, I think it's in every area like that. I remember I changed my school when I was 17 into a different school and I had to learn two years of a language. Uh, which the others already had all the time, but I didn't want to start from the beginning on. Mm. And I had three months to learn that. And the, um, the head of the school told me, you will not make that. You will end with a four, which is like one of the worst grades in Austria that you can get. <laughs> and in the end, I had a one. <laughs> so it was like, oh. I don't know. I kind of feel that, that need of proving people that things are possible. Yeah. And calisthenics is just the perfect sport to do this. Because there's like for women, there's so much underestimation and the skills already are generally pretty hard. So I kind of like that thrill. <laughs> That's nice because, uh, yeah, like I call these person contrary persons uh, yeah. <laughs> because I'm also uh, that kind of person when somebody tells me uh, you can't do that and uh, it's, it's not possible. I just say, ah, yeah, I have to try it and I have to, <laughs> to do it like uh, somehow. And um, I think it's really, really important, even in calisthenics, because the sport is not developed till the end. It's not like it's still in, in, a, in its beginning somehow. Um, Absolutely. And um, it's important to have people like you who break limits, who don't accept the norms, the, the rules. Um, yeah, because otherwise the sport doesn't evolve and go forward. I agree. Because also, also what you, thank you to you guys. What you are doing, like there's somebody pushing the, the calisthenic scene to a very great direction, in my opinion. Yeah, and also like people also told me it's not possible what you, what you do in the beginning, of course. Like yeah. people who were in the scene, in the calisthenic scene for years, they told me, no, it's not possible to do high quality uh, like equipment and like mostly clothing at this time. Because yeah. in the calisthenic scene, everybody's broke. That's what they said. Everybody's broke. Every, nobody wants to spend money and they won't appreciate high quality clothing. They just, just want it cheap. Mm -hmm. And I thought, ah, no, I, I don't think so. Like, uh, and, um, it evolved. Yeah, it evolved. Yeah, and uh, we can influence that. It's not that it's it's just evolving. How somebody like uh, it's evolving just like that. But there are companies, people like you and me, influencing it, and um, that's important. So um, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and it really depends a lot on what region you look at. Like I think if you look at, for example, Germany and Austria, where well, in Germany the market I think for freestyle calisthenics is not that big as far as my research showed it, but yeah. <laughs> Vienna is actually not too bad in the game. And yeah. also if you look at um, France or Spain, there it's, there it's a normal middle-class sport already. So yeah. it really depends a lot on where you look. And I think there are actually a lot of business opportunities there for companies that do not see it yet. Yeah, like and and of course uh, for people to to train. Like in Italy, it feels from here from Germany, it feels like every second athlete uh, is from Italy because Italy yeah. is like <laughs> so so big, so so many strong athletes, etc. I agree. So um, yeah, it's just don't accept norms and standards and rules. That then maybe that's the 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 essence of what we what we think. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, yeah, like. Um, you told us what was your beginning like uh, to come in calisthenics. You had some some fundamental strength uh, from from gymnastics, I guess, and some yes. <laughs> some basics. Um, and um, what was uh, since now your your biggest success in in, in your uh, 
career mm-hmm. you're like in your athlete as an athlete as an athlete Whew, that's a pretty hard question actually um i would not say that there's like one spot it's like these tiny successes mm-hmm. that you have throughout your training um i'm a big fan of baby steps so for me a big success is for example when i can do a negative fence and push up um for eight seconds stand without losing my balance because this is a weak spot for me mm-hmm. um i would not mark one competition as a as the biggest success like i think that all the ones that i did were a success for me because i prepared very well and well there were always points that i didn't like that much like for example in sweden i failed my shrimp flip and my 360 and it was like really frustrating for me <laughs> at the same time like a minute later i held a wonderful straddle plunge so it's like hard to measure it in competitions i guess and that, i think that's what normally people would do but i think for me it's actually the fact that i found a method that allows me to currently have small successes I don't know yeah. if this makes sense, but like it does. being able to progress in your training without getting injured and all the time having these tiny successes and getting better. This is what makes me feel successful as an athlete because mm-hmm. I think that's quite a big point. There's no sense. Like if you only win once, then it's like, okay, the next point is again winning. Mm-hmm. But there's actually so much in between where you can like find success. So... I think it's more a matter of perspective. And it also comes together maybe with the topic of your uh, planche video that you did on YouTube, that it's not about progressing fast, um, like in progressing yeah. how to get the planche fast, but uh, to, to have it stable. And uh, like, what was the, the essence of the video for you? For me, the point was, well, I, I actually chose the title because I get that question so often. Yeah. And many people messaged me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> um, that they saw the title and they were like, no, please, not another one saying that it works fast. <laughs> and then they listened to the first few seconds and they were like, okay, no, <laughs> she's actually saying something completely different. But for me, the essence of the video was that I wanted to tell people that it's not about the time. It's about constant progress because even if you have the skill, it doesn't mean that you still can't improve. So you can always improve more and more and more. And this is like a crucial spot for me. And also something that I wanted to point out. And the second important point for me in this video was to stop comparing yourself with others all the time. I know that for myself, I'm like super, super strict with myself. I always want to be the best on it. No matter which area in my life I look at, I I always want to be on top. And that's really a struggle sometimes for me. Um, but I decided for myself that every time I waste with comparing myself to others, um, I could spend the same amount of time on improving myself and, uh, focusing on details that other people might have skipped. So I think this is the essence of the video to, to really focus on, on the progress itself and not on achieving a certain skill because it's a constant progress. Even if you have the skill, you still want to progress in the skill. Okay, let's get into detail. Um, what, like, uh, I like the question, what is the hardest move that you've ever ch- achieved? Um, what would you answer to this For one? me, personally, it was shrimp flip. Mm-hmm. I've been tra- trying, I think you remember when I was in yeah. Winston, <laughs> screaming at the bar because I was so pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> um, Yeah, I guess it was shrimp flip. I've been trying it since the beginning of calisthenics. So this is three years, a bit more than three years actually ago. I've been trying it now and then. Then I had phases where I tried it a bit more often and I caught it a few times, but I never really had it safe. And I remember I was really frustrated about like dynamics in general because I'm, I'm, kind of I shit in my pants when I train dynamics I'm gonna be honest (laughs) I'm just so scared of twisting my ankle again or um, ruining my wrist because it has happened already in so many areas so often so my mind is kind of triggered but um, I was talking to Dan Rosenberg 
-hmm. And I asked him if he's doing dynamics online coaching. It doesn't really work that well, but let's put it that way. He gave me a lot of tips and sent me videos on what to improve. And with that strategy, I had it quite quickly then. Mm -hmm. And having it was like, oh my God, I remember the first time I really... We, we were listening to, to the song um, Fix You from Coldplay. Mm -hmm. so when you try your best, but you don't succeed. Yeah. That part, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they were turning on that song because we wanted to make a meme where I don't catch it. Okay. And they turned on the song and, and then you... when, when it was, and you don't succeed, I, I caught the bar and I was like, no. what? <laughs> <laughs> It was so funny and like such a great moment. So this was a huge success for me. Okay. And what did, what did lead, what did like, what was the, the, sorry, what is the advice that you would give someone to learn the shrimp flip from your perspective now? Um, I would advise them to especially pay specific attention to the timing. Um, also, the difficult thing about dynamics is that everybody teaches it differently. Like there are super many approaches to skills and different techniques to do it. Um, I would actually say just don't give up because there's no better advice that I can give in that sense. I, I think to learn shrimp flip, it's like with every other dynamic skill, like some you have quickly, some you have slowly. That's just how it is. And technical wise, I would stick to one technique. Find one person that can do it really well, that catches it always, and that is good in explaining it. So I, I guess that's that that's the bottom line of it. Okay. So I guess um like if you don't have a person uh, near you, you can go back to YouTube maybe, maybe there are, uh, do you think there is helpful advice on YouTube or in this case, like as you said, freestyle dynamics is like a different topic. It's difficult. Um, I personally never used YouTube to learn a dynamic skill. Never. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit old school in that sense as I come from gymnastics and I'm used to having somebody lead me through the movement. Yeah. I think this is a huge part that misses in calisthenics where you could make it a lot easier for people who are scared of dynamics to learn them. If you would like have step-by-step -step approaches and um, it's just very hard to program. I like to work with plans and with a structure and that's really hard in dynamics. You just try, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is why it's also really hard for me to give advice because at some point it just worked out. Yeah. But I'm not such a fan of the of the YouTube tutorials. It's, to be honest, I, I had a look at a few of them, but they don't take away the fear. Yeah, that's, and that's true. that's normally the biggest issue. So you've got to find actually ways to reduce the fear mm -hmm. and have somebody who really makes you feel safe. So I haven't been able to do a backflip dismount for years. I used to do it in gymnastics, but I mm -hmm. once crashed on my neck and then I didn't do it again. And um, I learned it when somebody was really standing there and I felt how he put the hand underneath my back, kind of give me the, the assurance that I yeah. won't fall on my head again. So this is why I think it's, with, with statics, it's great. You can find a lot of good content, but with dynamics, I think it's hard because you really need that physical closeness sometimes, especially if you're a beginner. Okay. Especially also for girls, because they're normally more scared than guys. On average, yeah. I would say. Okay, yeah, and mm -hmm. on average, of course, like um, yeah. maybe, yeah. Of course, there are like there are really yeah some that are take it easy, but if you look on the average, it's girls that are normally more scared of of trying crazy shit than guys. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like, if you want to, um, I just uh, remember that uh, Daniel Flayfield does uh, some some freestyle uh, YouTube uh, tutorials and mm -hmm. also released an ebook. So if if, uh, if I know, yeah, if somebody wants to look look into it, but as you say, um, the fear um, is is something that goes away with coaching, uh, like person to person. One on one, um, yeah. Yeah, one on one. Um, so yeah. Um, 
that's the, that's the best thing, I guess, as well. Um, so uh, when, when you look at the calisthenics scene right now, what are the biggest mistakes that uh, people do in calisthenics uh, from your perspective? I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> they go too fast. Okay. They go too fast and too hard. Um, they are impatient. They want to learn everything like that. And they compare themselves too much to people that have been doing it for six years. That's definitely, in my opinion, the biggest mistake. And I see it with guys and with girls. There's no sense in jumping into a straddle flange. I tried it and I got injured. <laughs> <You> don't do it. <laughs> Just as an example. And there are many, like, you should not try a backflip dismount if you feel not safe with swinging. Just because somebody did it and it looked cool doesn't mean that you should just go for it. I mean, don't just send it. <laughs> <laughs> it that's, in my opinion, really the, the, the biggest mistake. They all, it's an ego problem, in my opinion. Okay. They need to fix their egos and learn to pay attention to the baby steps. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, because people forget that stuff like uh, like the joints they don't recover. Like they, it it can last forever if you hurt a joint really bad. Yeah. Um, and they want the the maybe the end. Yeah, maybe like, yeah, and they want the quick improvement. They want the quick successes. Yeah. Um, so patience. So that, I think it's a problem that most people have in life. Like you always see successful people and you want to get there super quickly, but that's not how it works. They are successful because they put in all the work and not because God threw a gift from the top of, on, onto them and it just worked out, you know. It's, yeah. There's a lot of hard work for, for everybody there and people need to learn that. And because you said the thing with the joints, I think warm-up, that's the second part. The people skip the warm-ups. That's just stupid. And if they warm-up, they often do it in a way where I think like this. <laughs> won't help you <laughs> just do it properly <laughs> yeah. So. yeah i i remember when you do your shows with uh, team alphaba because uh like maybe some of the people know but uh you're you're also a part of team alpha bar uh like one of the or the biggest uh calisthenics group in in europe um yeah i think we're the biggest actually like i haven't found any bigger one so far yeah so um and you're doing shows in front of uh like uh, in front of what can, what in front of groups of people in uh shopping centers we were last year or like stuff like that um yeah. and i remember your warm-up like you started as, as one of the first doing your warm-up uh you put a lot of energy minutes, at least. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of focus in it like when i say iris, iris uh, no she's not responding she's doing her her warm-up so <laughs> that's something that i admire because warm-up is not fun like um it is no. like this so but you still do it Although if you put in things that you generally want to improve, so what I do in my warm-up, and this is maybe helpful for the people who listen to it, to this podcast, is I do a lot of dynamic stretching. And I don't know if people know what that is, but that basically means is that I don't go only like this, but I do this. So I kind of give like short impulses on, on the stretch all the time. So it starts opening. And like this, you can also, for example, anticipate movements that you're later going to do in dynamics or so I do everything with a sense on this is going to help me to improve a certain skill and then it's more fun as well because it feels like part of your training okay get it um that's that's true um I would like to switch to your role at uh, world of bar heroes because uh, sure. <laughs> you're not only uh, like an athlete, but you're also uh, doing a lot and putting a lot of energy in uh, growing calisthenics, growing street workouts, uh, freestyle uh, mostly uh, with World of Bar Heroes. So um, what, is your, what is your role at World of Bar Heroes? The, for, for the people shortly, and what is World of Bar Heroes? I don't want to explain okay. it, you can, you can pitch it better. <laughs> So World of Bar Heroes is an organization and we organize international calisthenics competition and events um, with the aim to bring the sport to the general public. So we have a huge focus on show. We have a huge focus on music, on creativity and on unique athletes. So what we do is we really want to create a battle that is nice to watch for people that is interesting to watch and that never gets boring. 
I guess that's sums it up the best. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm I'm hyped. I'm I'm in. <laughs> Um, yeah, so also the athletes that we choose normally have a very own style. They may not always be the best in terms of statics, for example. Like some of them have, I don't want to say it like that, but bad form statics as well. But they might be super good in combining it with the music or putting it all together. So we, we like that variety. And um, yeah, also when we select the athletes, creativity is probably after the skills the most highest rated um perspective that we look at okay and um my role there is i'm actually named the head organizer um together with party but my main role is or what i what i normally do is i do community management so everything concerning social media i'm if you get messages from well the five heroes they're normally from me <laughs> sometimes they're also from party but the majority is answered by me and um the stories and i think about the content that we put on there with party so that's one part and the other part is of course event organization i do the whole athlete communication so if people have questions during events i'm the one to talk to i'm the one who runs around backstage and tries to coordinate everything uh, to calm down nervous girls before competitions <laughs> and that kind of <laughs> stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically my my role all in all. And of course, I mean, I'm also um, a lot into um, the whole graphic stuff. So if we make sponsor pitches, I'm the one who designs them. Yeah, I try to implement my knowledge that I get, got at business school or that I still get at business school to into the into the business and make it grow and help the sport grow like that so that's, that's and i think yeah and i think that you're doing a really good job because i uh, remember a few years ago it was 2017 i think it was 2017 um like the the first time that uh uh Barisi and king of the bar didn't uh, take place at the, at yeah, the people that was anymore 2017 and uh, like Barsflex was uh, the the company who took initiative, who took uh, the risk and the the took uh, like put the en energy in it to yes. <laughs> let the the historical battles of the FIBO continue. Uh, and it's it's crazy to th see the evolution from 2017 yeah. to uh, like last year. This year is a little bit difficult with uh, with uh, the quarantine and COVID. Um, but like it, it wasn't insane last year and uh, all the so stuff that is uh, that is organized you're you're doing such an amazing job for for the for the community for the people for the athletes and um something i don't know if you listened uh, to a lot of interviews here because i know that you're a busy person but in the end <laughs> i always ask people what is their what was the best calisthenics event that uh, that that they've ever been at and it was like uh, nearly everybody said world of bar heroes until now so um that's like uh, a really big compliment for what you do and uh, i know that you put a lot of art in it so um yeah, yeah. thank you both. wow this really touches me actually <laughs> I mean, they say that in front of me, but it's like, you know, it's me standing in front of them. So maybe they feel forced to say it, but this really means a lot to me. So, yeah, I, I actually, I think I never in my whole life, I poured so much love and energy into something. Um, I will never forget like time before FIBO. I was, I didn't have a single car ride where I didn't think about how we could do certain things. And I always called Pauli and was like, Pauli sent me a WhatsApp message because otherwise I will, will forget until I'm home. And so it's like super stressful. And then the night before FIBO, like before the competition, I was lying in bed, like my eyes wide open. I like, I feel my heartbeat going up until here. <laughs> and I don't know, I think it was three in the night. and I was like, Pauli, I can't sleep. <laughs> we were just like talking and, and playing the, the worst scenarios in our head, what could happen. And then it was the competition and it just, I didn't see anything of the competition because I was working backstage. I was running back and forth all the time. I think it was the most stressful hours in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember the final when I was dreaming of seeing the front flip rig rep live in one of our events. Wow. And then Ikwan like he pulled it in the final and <laughs> when he caught it, I remember Flo was standing next to me. Flo is the third person in our team. 
and we were both screaming at each other when he caught that bar and I just started crying and it was like so <laughs> many emotions so it's just like I'm so thankful for these moments and I think if I would have to name now my favorite favorite moment in my life so far I would say it was that one moment at FIBO because it just that one hit me so hard it was so wow just you know and isn't there also a photo of you and Ikwan at the uh, after the winner's ceremony? Yeah, <laughs> in the crowd. <laughs> it's it's one of my favorites. It's so nice. Like I've I've always admired Ikwan, um, even though I couldn't talk a lot to him because like his English is not too good, but he's such a humble person. And uh, yeah, I was actually also crying on that picture. I'm I'm such a sensitive person, but <laughs> if like something really means a lot to me, then you can see that. <laughs> that's good that's that's also yeah. strength and uh like uh maybe some of the people know that follow you um but you're also playing piano you're uh you're uh you love to sing uh and oh, in, yes. in my opinion <laughs> it's incredible to really to, to listen to you um, thank you and uh like and you love to dance and you you're you're good in dancing so you thank have so you. many talents um where where do you take the time to to put it all in there like um how <laughs> it's hard let's put it that way like right now i focus a lot on on calisthenics and to like maybe get more active as an influencer because i i would like to work in that direction and like i'm i'm just a very communicative person so that fits me very well and being able to combine that with my marketing knowledge is pretty interesting and i think i could put great value in for that sport so um that's like at the moment my my biggest focus besides studying i want to finish my studies Thanks. finally <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah singing is currently not really that present unfortunately but i remember when i when i left high school um my dad offered me to start to start studying music and singing and i thought a lot about it and i think i would have loved it um but at the same time i was like okay you have the option now sports 100% and the other stuff like 25% or music and i was like i'm young and my body is young now and sports is something that you can do only really on a high level if you're young so i decided to go for the sport but and that might sound funny now i have the vision of me being 55 and standing on a huge <laughs> stage and singing. <laughs> wow. So that's why I still take singing lessons almost every week, actually. So I have, it's like one hour a week and then I practice like not a lot, a few minutes a day just to stay into it. Like I've been having singing lessons since I was 11, I think. So quite a long time. And I hope that maybe one day I can make also more out of that. But it's like something that won't pass. Like if you stick to it, you can sing your whole life compared to dynamics, for example. Yeah. I think there's a point where you are advised to stop. Now I have a weird image in my head when you are, uh, you are on a stage, you're singing with 55 and then you stop, you do a handstand push-up and, <laughs> and then you continue singing again. So, that would be so epic though <laughs> yeah it would like yeah. it would make me very unique i guess so yeah maybe something to work on yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's true something that i was wondering what is the most um like the most um asked question on instagram that you get in instagram dm cool i guess how to learn any skill fast that's why i also made the planche yeah. <laughs> video um, I think that's one of the most commonly asked ones. And can I get a shout out? I get so annoyed by oh, that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were asking me. I was like a little bit <laughs> confused for a second. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, would I would never ask for a shout out. I think, yeah, I think shout out should be earned. It's like yeah. you, have to, you have to put out good content and you will get it. Yeah. And that's just how it is. Yeah, yeah. You don't ask for something like that. It's, just, it's like asking somebody if you could spray your name on their house wall yeah. you just don't do this <laughs> yeah. so these questions i get quite often actually i would say and lately general a lot of questions concerning skills because i started doing these mini tutorials so i kind of try to make a mix of my own progress and 
helping people to progress themselves. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm trying to getting to get more into coaching and actually help people, especially nice. girls, to to get better in this sport because I think in the end this is what matters. We need to get more good people to help the sport grow. Of course, I also am concerned about myself as an athlete and I want to achieve a lot. But for me, always the the bigger goal is to help a bigger community to create value for them and and help them grow so to say okay what would you recommend somebody who really wants a shout out um i would say i would not recommend somebody to do something to get a shout out i would recommend them something that helps them to grow their follower base by themselves mm -hmm. and this is mainly classical marketing rules put out good content <laughs> put out something that is interesting for people communicate with the people try to get that personal interaction you want to create that sympathy and and really like being being a content creator is not something for everybody you need to be that open person you need to be ready to talk to people and and to listen to them and give them advice i think that's a big point at least in calisthenics i'm not too familiar with content creating in other areas but um i think that's important like the the right content and really trying to get a connection to the people mm -hmm. that's a lot more important than only looking at the number of your followers okay. so yeah when when you say this uh, i have to remember and it also goes together with uh bringing value and delivering value uh you like Maybe some of the people know who listen, but you, you also uh, worked for Gornation for uh, some time and you were also yes. like part of our team and of our mission. And you, and you still that. are like some, somewhere in your heart. Uh, and I really appreciate that you... Always going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just remember your stories that you did, um, the story designs that you did with uh, World Banana Day, World, uh, like uh, facts about calisthenics, yeah. stuff like that. And um, like... That's easy to do for for somebody. Um, like there is a lot of uh, like you don't need Photoshop, etc. You can just yeah. um, design it easily and think about something that brings value. Um, so um, there are exactly. so many ways to 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 grow. And if you, if social media presence is important to you, you don't have to be able to do a full planch to no. have followers. Not at all. No, it's like you have to be unique. And you have to do something that is interesting for people. I mean, I, I only have 10K now, so I'm, I think I would have more advice maybe if I would have 300K. But it's just from my perspective and also what I learned at business school because we have social media marketing as well. And these are just very important points. It's always about the value. And in fact, if you're working as a content creator, you're acting as a kind of business mm -hmm. and if you want to become that you also have to act like a business and you can't act as a 16 year old <laughs> dude that has no idea about anything and just like tries to desperately get a hold of other people mm -hmm. so and i i know that this is hard but i think that's important for people to understand Okay. to find their own line it, there's no sense in copying people or like all, all these daniel's license copies it's nice that they try it but i think it would value it a lot more if they would do their own stuff and um come up with new ideas because this is what makes it really interesting yeah. they're never gonna be as good as the people they want to imitate because they're just not the same people it's just a different yeah. essence yeah that's true Okay, nice. So um, yeah, we're we're coming to an end, uh, but I still have some quick questions, quick answers with you. Yeah. Um, so, what do you prefer, pizza or burger? Burger. Burger. Okay. Uh, are you <laughs> <laughs> are you a dog or a cat person? Dog. Dog. Okay. <laughs> um, your favorite location for holidays. Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona. You spent your uh, your semester there, or I spent two summers there, and I have a lot of friends there. I 
absolutely love the city. I absolutely love the calisthenics community there. They are like so kind and like they got me into the group from day one on and it's, they ask me almost every week when I come back. So that's so much love. And like, I, I really like that place and I love Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, it depends on the coronavirus, but if the coronavirus will, like if the whole situation gets better, then I'm going to spend my exchange semester in Madrid. Oh. And I'm really looking forward to that as well because I got to know quite a few athletes um, in World of Bar Heroes from Madrid. And they were like, oh, Iris, we're going to train together. And I'm like, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm super excited to go there. And I actually really want to get... I'm, I'm kind of fluent in Spanish, but I don't feel as safe as in English. Like When I talk English, it, speaks like, it feels like speaking German. It's not mm -hmm. a lot of difference for me. So and I would love to get to that point in Spanish as well because it's such a nice language and just super helpful, like especially in calisthenics. You and how come, okay. sorry, uh, like I, I think the story is uh, interesting how you're able to, to speak English so well. So uh, what's, what's behind it? Um, my dad was speaking English to me my whole life. Like when I was... When I, when I got born, I think it was six weeks old, my dad decided to speak English with me because he had spent quite a few time, uh, quite a few months, I think, or was it? Yeah, I think it was a few months that he spent working in Canada. Yeah. So he had us a very good English and he um, thought that it would be helpful to raise his kids bilingually. So he started speaking English to us and it's super weird now if he speaks German to me because that's normally only the case when I did something like that oh. I should not do. <laughs> so I prefer him speaking English to me. And yeah, that helped me a lot. And I'm also a language person. I love to talk, no matter in which language. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So um, what would you work if social media just disappeared? If social media just disappeared, I would work probably as a um, market researcher. Mm -hmm. I found my interest for that lately. Or, and I think that would be even, well, obviously as an event organizer. Like that's still, I'm, I don't see social media as my only future job. I want to do it and I know that I want to earn money with this as well. but. I plan to do my master in sports management mm -hmm. and focus on uh, event marketing and that kind of stuff because I'm just, I love stages and I love the thrill of that short time where just everything has to work out. So that's a lot of fun for me. And um, that's actually the job that I want to have. And I would say if, I don't know, if World of Bar Heroes for any reason should not exist anymore, I'm going to go into a different sport, probably skiing because I love skiing, <laughs> but I could imagine working in, in the event area in sports for sure. Nice. What is your f favorite calisthenics athlete? Oof. I got to be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have a favorite. Um, I have some that really inspire me. I'm, I'm very inspired by Dan Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. Since the beginning on, he was one of the first athletes I followed and I remember when I got to know him um, in person, it was at the, at the airport in Cologne before the FIBO competition. And um, it, it felt like we would have known each other already for a while. So nice. we were like on the same webs completely. We even drove in the wrong directions three times because we were talking so much. What? So, <laughs> I, I got along with him so well. So he always inspired me. Um, who also inspired me always was Melanie Driesen for her dynamics and like she's such a fun person she, mm. she's like so so cool she was in Vienna in December and we were having a weekend together and it was so much fun I, I can't remember the last time I was goofing around so much with with somebody it was just really cool so yeah she, she's really amazing and I'm also a big fan of, of Malin mm -hmm. Um, so also competing against her was like, wow, because she was also one of the, the girls I've been following from the beginning on. So she's like, just really, really inspiring for me. 
also in terms of her content marketing, she's doing such a good job on that. So there's more ways I get inspired by her. And lately also Carmen Venema mm -hmm. yeah. from the Netherlands. She's still, let's say, not yet that known, but I think she will get quite big in the future because she learned so quickly and at the yeah. same time she has such a winner's mindset so i am i'm quite a big fan of her as well and a last one that i definitely have to name is victor kamenov he is amazing like he's such a kind person also and then he has this incredible skills that are just like mind-blowing for me and as i'm aesthetics person more this is like something I don't know if this is possible to mm -hmm. learn in a lifetime, <laughs> but I truly admire him. So I guess that these five people for me. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So the favorite calisthenics athlete turned into five, but uh, yeah. I have to admit, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> all the five are like crazy, crazy athletes. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite book? My favorite book? Oof. Now you caught me. I'm not really a reader, to be honest, because, you know, when you study, you have to read a lot and I get pretty sick of reading, actually. Okay, the next um, question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I actually have a favorite book. I read a few on personal development and there was one that was called uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. That one was really good because it taught me a lot about myself and helped me to um, get rid of depression. Mm -hmm. So I really like that one a lot. And I would recommend everybody who's like turning adulty to read this because it just helps you to get more grounded. And it speaks about many topics also like um, not comparing yourself to others or taking baby steps. Like I actually, the, the term baby steps I got from the book back then. And my dad gave it to me. Wow. Yeah. My whole family read it actually. It was really mm. quite insightful. Nice. Best calisthenics event you've been at so far. <laughs> East of the bars. I would say. Okay. For me, like it, it's hard to judge in my own events. Of course. If I would have to judge on my own events, I would say FIBO because mm -hmm. this was just, I told you like my whole emotional connection in that event was just sick. So that was of course a crazy experience, but looking at it from a perspective where exclude World of Fire Heroes events, mm -hmm. I would say Beast of the Bars. Beast of the Bars, Stockholm, yeah. Sweden. That was really nice. great by Daniel Fleefiel. <laughs> yeah, he's also such a cool person. Like, I yeah. love talking to him. That's true. That's true. And the last question, dynamics or statics? Statics. <laughs> statics, yeah. yeah in, the in the beginning, it was dynamics, but now you're like the dynamics uh, love lover. <laughs> the statics lover, yeah. Statics, sorry, yeah. Yeah, thanks to, to my coach, Dennis. He kind of gave me the love for this and yeah it's the best training with him like best decision i made since i started calisthenics was taking him as a coach nice okay so um how can people stay in touch with you how can they talk to you reach you what can they do if they say oh, <laughs> iris this was so inspiring i want to uh, learn more <laughs> um well obviously instagram I actually replied to almost every message. If I don't reply, then I just missed it, but not on purpose. So uh, direct messages on my profile, iris underscore easy. Easy written like the English word easy. Mm -hmm. but, but, by the way, my nickname. <laughs> for those who don't know. Um, and so, yeah, on Instagram, obviously, I also have TikTok. Same tag, iris underscore easy. And on YouTube also, Iris easy, but without underscore. So just two words. Um, yeah, I guess that's the easiest to get in touch with me. You can also add me on LinkedIn, but I'm not very well, active there. <laughs> can I get a shout out on LinkedIn from you? 
I, I can try if you want to be seen by <laughs> by university people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only have my university community there because okay. well, there's nobody from like not a lot from calisthenics happening there. I think you guys post quite a few yeah. things yeah. now and then, but I'm not really that active there. It's just like if I get a message, I reply to it. But okay. since I have a job, well, half of it right now it's a bit hard, but <laughs> yeah. I'm busy now. And how can people support World of Bar Heroes right now? You're doing the online uh, league. Uh, like, how can they support? Because right now, events, like, it's, it's a little bit difficult to say, and you said it yourself. So how can people yeah. support you just uh, with World of Bar Heroes? Take part in our challenges. That's my, like, we are doing these challenges to unite the community. Mm -hmm. And we know if people tag us in their stories and like it's just marketing you know it, it comes back again to this i know that people in the calisthenics scene don't like the word too much because it's often associated with only like taking money but i actually mean this as the sense of marketing and getting people to see something so if we want calisthenics to grow we need to work together and if you guys take part in our challenges and um our name pops up more often it is easier to us to get bigger sponsors get people into the calisthenics market that have the financial resources to help the sport accelerate to the next level and make bigger competitions and eventually have people be able to live from that sport i mean there are already some that do this but most of them have to be coaches at the same time Yep. Like, I think it would be great if a professional athlete like, um, let's say, Dan Rosenberg or, or Viktor Kamenov could live from competing and would not have to, yeah. I think that's, that's, yeah. So I think that's the, the most important thing. And yep. we want to bring that sport also with Team Alphaba to, to schools, to, to the general public. So shout it out to the world. Mm. It's, I want, I want a shitload of people at our events. This is, this is what I want because this is what helps the sport the most and this is how we will all grow together. Oh. It's not, I'm, I'm not earning a lot with this, really not. I know that many people think that, but I'm not earning basically anything with this. It's just like I get a little bit too. Don't do it for nothing, you know? But I would really, this would be my wish to this community. Just work together. And even if you also support other events, like support the WCO, support Beast of the Bars, this is what the sport needs. If we support these events, then we will grow. So, yeah. Nice. So, yeah. You can also, we will also link uh, the World of Bar Heroes, uh, like social media accounts uh, down there, you. YouTube, uh, Instagram. And uh, yeah, like uh, I'm really, really happy that you took the time. Um, that you took the time to be here from your from your gym. Thank you for your time also. <laughs> I think everybody's a little bit je jealous because of the gym in the back uh, because I guess like it's it's the team alpha bar. One like, love. <laughs> and I think everybody who touched the, the bars flex bars knows that this is like real it's it's a nice thing. And this uh, is the location of the underground leagues where yeah, right wow. now. So. Okay. These nice. bars were, were touched by many cool people. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. The holy grail of calisthenics. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Nice. So we're coming to an end. Thanks yes. everybody for <laughs> listening till the end. And uh, yeah, I will give you the last uh, words uh, at the end. But before I want to say thanks for listening till the end. I know it's always a, a long interview and I, we appreciate everyone who listens it till the end, who uh, listens to Iris, um, to her knowledge and to her story. So, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, don't forget to rate the episode, to give us feedback, what we can improve, what we can do better, what we did good. That's also nice to hear. And uh, you can tag the person or uh, say his name that you want to be interviewed next. And now I'm, I'm thanking you again, Iris, for your time and you can end the episode. Thanks, everyone. See you. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time also, Philip. I like It's always a pleasure to, to work together with, with Coronation in what sense ever. And um, I hope that this interview was insightful for the people to, that listen to it and maybe it helps you to um, get better in calisthenics and maybe work a little bit on your mindset also. And yeah.
I hope I'm gonna hear from you guys. <laughs> Feel free to message me. I'm always replying. I don't know. <laughs> See you then.